Okay. Give it a second, so. There we go. Okay. Hang on. Is it coming in? Let me know. There we go. There we really? Go. <laughs> yeah. It's it's good. It's good. Blame the unit. Okay. I missed my step. It's all right. Yep. We're all good. You're good? I'm great. Okay, hey everybody, yeah. welcome <laughs> to Festool Live. Yeah. Yay! Everybody in the room, I apologize. It's gonna be a little repetitive and I gotta remember <laughs> what I did already. Okay, hey! Little hiccup today, no worries. I hope every ha everybody had a good Thanksgiving uh, holiday. We are already here at Festival HQ getting ready for the holidays. Yes. All right, so let's introduce the room. Right over here we have Dan the Man. Behind the camera we have Chris, it was my fault, the unit. Correct. Okay, Correct. and over here we have Min Min. Hi. Woo! <laughs> this is, oh, and on Line, we have Brent answering all our questions. Thank you, Brent, as always. Garrett's spying on us, too. Garrett is on the line as well, right? Mm -hmm. Okay. And I see Minnie wrote something. Let's say it. Happy, Happy birthday, birthday Owen. Owen, from <laughs> WI, which is Wisconsin. <laughs> Minnie, you said there was some snow up there? Yeah. Yeah, she, she said that at the beginning of the episode, which you guys didn't see. <laughs> <laughs> All right, so happy Festool Friday, everybody. Yeah, of course, you've tuned in to Festool Live. This is episode number 160. And it's Minnie's favorite series, Lost in the Catalog, just in time for the holidays. And you know what episode this is? Episode 11. 11. 11. I'm so excited. You knew you had that much stuff in there. 11, because sometimes Lost in a Catalog goes to 11. All right. <laughs> oh. <laughs> <laughs> I know I've already done this, but I'm looking back over here to say, I, is this the third time I'm saying it? Okay, everybody. <laughs> Today, after the show, I'm on the way to Cincinnati. I'm meeting Travis. He's demoing the down at Mueller. Mueller. Edward D. Mueller Machinery in Cincinnati all day today, but also I will be there with him at the end of the show today, but all day tomorrow from nine to two, we're demoing all kinds of great new tools that we released in 2023 and any fest tool you wanna see. That's tomorrow, December 2nd. I can't believe it's December already. Okay, so as we start over, let's get right into it. I don't wanna rush into it, but my ride leaves in five minutes, okay. <coughs> You're blushing, Chris. I know, I know. I don't like making mistakes. It's okay, brah. It's okay, brah. It's okay. Bra. It's okay. Right. Hey, you're doing a lot better than Garrett. All right, so. <laughs> He's watching, isn't he? Yeah, he's going, he's going to kill me. Okay, first one. And as we go through this, this is not repetitive, but I talked about a few things prior in different episodes, but they were related to different things. This is one that I really didn't demonstrate well. This is the SDS plus adapter slot drive system to fast fix central tech stub. And the way I've always built it out is right here. I take this bit lock right here, magnetic tip, but I always put one of these. All of these are in the catalog, but this fits perfectly what? A Tapcon head, okay? And the reason I'm showing you this, this saves. See how this goes in and doesn't come out? It locks in and then I can take this and I have my SDS adapter. Hear me out on this, okay? Follow me, please, because this will save you a ton of, ton of time if you're putting a lot of Tapcons in. I'm gonna take this and I get the right bit in here. I just turn it, lock it in. Okay, now I've talked about this. I've already got a hook to Bluetooth. This is my dust shroud. And this is a huge time saver. And you'll see why in a minute. I already have this all hooked up today. I'm gonna put it in, watch. I'm gonna put it in the rotary hammer mode, and I'm gonna take this. See how it's, I get it on Bluetooth? And the nice thing about this is you have this right here. You see this uh, zone right here? It absorbs a lot of the vibration so you can work with this all day long. But here's why I love that SDS adapt. I'm gonna take this out, ooh, it's a little hot. And I'm gonna put this in. 
just like this, rotate it in. And now I could take my BHC 18 and turn it into what? Regular rotary mode, okay? And I can take my Tapcon and I can drive it in just like this, okay? The thing I didn't need to do was follow up with a second drill driver and I didn't have to have a vac and go and suck out the hole next. So I've saved a couple of steps there. Hopefully that made some sense. It's the SDS adapter. Chris has put all of these in the description. He's nodding, yes he did. Okay, did I have to check that? <laughs> you did. <laughs> all right, so <clears throat> on a traditional workbench, we've always worked with the people who have built furniture, built cabinetry, we've always worked with holdfasts, okay? They go into the, the uh, three quarter, or of course, us, Festool 20 millimeter, they go in and usually knock them with a mallet and they hold down their spring steel and they tilt back. Well, this is a version of this. We call this a lever clamp, 20 millimeter pod. I stick it in here like this, but I put firm pressure here and lock it back. The nice thing, it's one handed. So if I'm doing multiples, I just pull it like this. This comes out, I slide another one in, go like that. It's a quick lever clamp. That came out in a limited edition at one time. Everybody said, you gotta put that in permanent stock. And we did. And I have a couple of here. This makes and expedites locking and clamping wicked quick. I slide it in, lock it in, and it's nice and secure. Good? Those are the hold uh, lever clamps, or as I call them, the Festool hold fasts. Woo! We're gonna spend some time here. Uh, Dan, we're gonna get you right here with that camera. I think we got the camera that'll get focused in here because I'm gonna sit here for quite a bit because yes, I'm gonna be talking about some Central Tech accessories. I've talked about them before, but I actually just don't wanna talk about them. I wanna show you and show you how to set a few of these up and why you need them. I got a few applications. Okay, these are called countersinks and these are called countersinks. Okay, we have two of this style countersink. And whenever I have used these types where you have this little flute here, and that's where your chip comes out, I've used these pretty much exclusively for metalworking, aluminum, and sometimes really hard woods. And I'll show you a couple of applications that you can use them. But what I wanna do is I wanna show you what they're for. So I'm gonna get my CXS12 here, chuck it out. And I drilled a couple holes today. And when I drilled them, I almost went like this with my thumb. And that's a no-no because Dan, Dan and Chris, can you get in here? When you drill a hole through aluminum, you're left with a burr. Okay, this will deburr the hole. And we have two styles. This one goes from two millimeter, to eight millimeter, or in fractional, an eighth to three eighths okay, in diameter of your screw or hole. And then the larger one, okay, which I used here on this, is from uh, five millimeter to 15 or quarter to five eighths. So this is what this countersink does in aluminum. And see how it leaves that little chamfer? It also deburrs, it's really smooth. And these, everybody needs, okay, good. I can use it, look, I drilled this out earlier. Just be careful of these shavings, they do cut. All right, Minnie, you got the Band-Aids? Yep. Okay, good. I'm gonna come in here and you'll see. See how that leaves that little chamfer in there? I have to pre-drill it first. That is important. And that's what a countersink is. And this is, like I said, this is for the larger holes. And that's when you look in our catalog, it says five to 15 and two to eight. And a lot of people always asked over the years, what does that mean? It's the size of the hole that you're chamfering or countersinking. Uh, a countersink is basically a circular chamfer. And when I do them in wood, what I do is that is for to recess a bugle, a bugle head uh, for, um, for flushing. Now, when I'm drilling into, well, here's another example. I'm gonna tell you what, on my bench at home, I have a setup like this, it's the handle, but I have the small uh, countersink, and I'll show you why. And bear with me, because I am gonna talk about the, 
the drill countersink combo, which is amazing. Let me just put this in so you can see this. If you've ever drilled out melamine or decent plywood that has a decent veneer, and I was taught this in Fort Lauderdale by a friend of mine, his name was Greg. And I said, boy, that's an extra step you take. And, and hear me out, here's what I'm gonna show you. Okay, this is where I'm gonna screw into. I countersink it for, um, for my, the heads of my screws as I'm assembling something. Now you've probably, oopsie, I picked the wrong one. I should have grabbed the longer one, which I'm gonna grab right now. Okay, this has got the bigger tip. I wanna go all the way through. And what I have on the back side, and sometimes you'll see this, and I know some of you are shaking your head at home going, that happens to me all the time. And you have to take sandpaper and go like this to do that, right? And sometimes when you take that and you put a butt joint on there, sometimes those little splinters that come out the back will hold you off of your butt joint that you're doing or screwing together. So what Greg always had in his shop, and he taught me this, is it takes two seconds just to come over here with one of a countersink like this and just take it like that. So when I butt another piece up against there, I've deburred it. That's why I always have a countersink on my shop at home. Okay, let's get this catalog because there's a lot lost in there. Right, men? Okay. <clears throat> but what? This is... Yes! Who got that? Bland. Bland yes. MacArthur. He is your man. Because sometimes you need it to go to 11. All right, good. <laughs> <laughs> That's what Gary Katz said about the Capex. Our Capex goes to 11. All right, so we have two styles of drill countersinks. And I set these up all the time and have multiples of these because one, you have a drill bit, and this one is a 3.5 millimeter or 964. And this one is a 4.5 millimeter, you'll see them in the catalog or on our website, 1164. Okay, but people don't realize that it's very, very adjustable. I'm gonna use this one today. Okay, you have two hex screws here, and this is a quick access, you have a hole here. Okay, and one here. So let's do this. Let's take this and adjust this. What this adjusts is the whole countersink. Okay, how much I want to recess that round chamfer or countersink. All right, so that's the first one. The second one that I can always access through this hole here, but I'll show you better, is I adjust how far I want the screw, or the, I'm sorry, the drill bit to go in and out. Okay, so I'll set it up like this and lock it in, just like this. I try to align one of the flutes with the flutes of the drill bit. I've always done that. Now, see the flat right here? Okay, I'm gonna take that and put it in. Now, how much of a countersink do I want? Do I wanna go deep? or do I want to go shallow? It depends on the head of your screw that you're using, and it's fully, fully adjustable. So if you have multiples of these, you can have different countersink settings. And I'll just take this out so we can do this in the wood right here. And here we go. That won't work that way. Okay, and once again, Central Tech, you get a better power transmission, and look. I can get it all in one. And you're gonna notice something else that not so many people talk about or realize, that this black part here is non-marring. Okay, it's a no ma tip, no ma Garcia para. Never mind, that's a, that's a really bad joke. Okay, so that is the drill countersink. Let's hold this up. The drill bit countersink combo, non-marring, and this is your countersink. So there you go. And I think in the catalog, it, they both say countersinks. Woo, okay, just in time for the holidays. Everybody's putting these screw hooks in, right? Okay, well, we have this. And this gets lost in the catalog. I can't tell you how many times people have pointed this out. What's this, Minnie? That is so cool. You like that, don't you? Yeah, I do. Okay, it's amazing. it is. So I'm just gonna take this, and you know, because you probably gotta screw a bunch of these in and you have a screwdriver or something or a piece of wood to do this, why don't you speed it up? I'm just gonna take it like this and you're gonna see how I can put that in there. And you can just take that, oopsie. Let's get a little 
let's set our clutch a little and you can take that and you can set you can set screw hooks and that will come right out like that you can do that above your head on your porch just in time for the holidays do not leave home without it i'm just kidding okay do i have everything covered Yes, so far. so far. Don't forget to get the right Brad Point drill pits. These are fantastic. <sighs> Boy, I'm starting to sound like an infomercial for uh, Santa Claus there. Okay. Does anybody out there, or you guys all probably know this, I can't work without this type of drill bit. It's called, we, we call it in the catalog, it's called out, it's called self centering. It's right here. Everybody out there who's watching this knows this as a VIX bit. And boy, when I discovered this many, many moons ago, uh, it, it changed the way I set all the hardware in my cabinets. Okay, so you, and I'm just gonna use a typical door hinge like this. And I know you mortise these in, but when you look at the hinge, there's a little chamfer in there, right? Okay, it's countersunk because your screws need to fit what? Flush. So when you do this, you know what? I'm gonna do it like this. I'm gonna do it the wrong way first. <clears throat> okay, let me just open this up. I love this, I love this drill bit set. Okay, let's just do it like this. So you don't have a VIX bit and you go like this and you go, that's kinda close to center. This is, and then you drill another one. You make it a market with your pencil and it's not right. Or you do something like this because you think you're getting good at this and you go like this and then you go, okay. And you try to aim it in the middle. What happens is if it is not dead center in there and you go to set your screws, one of them, even if this is mortised in, it's super tight, it will drag that off a hair like that. And man, that's a recipe for disaster. So what a VIX bit does, or self-centering bit, is because that has, and hopefully this is coming across here, see how that goes in there? It already, it's already centered on there. It centers itself. So if I take that, watch, and man, get sure you get in here, unit. See that? <laughs> absolutely dead center. Now, the bit size that comes with that is um, five millimeter. And where that really shines is right over here. Do I have, yep. Setting cabinet hardware, working with the five millimeter coarse screws. So I drilled these with the LR32 and I knew those were in and I could set those, but I didn't need to get them self-scented because I've already, what, established my holes for these, the cis rails, okay, for the Gen 3. So I could actually, and all, all European hardware, we call it European hardware, all Euro cabinets, it's all cabinet tree today, work off these five millimeter holes. Like, like here's a hinge plate, and these are the uh, expansion ones like this, okay? But what's nice about this uh, VIX bit slash self-centering bit, oh, it's wonderful, is what if I'm out on a job site and I need a few extra holes and if I mark them properly, I can, or there's all kinds of jigs out there from all the hardware manufacturers that will self-center on those jigs and I can drill extra holes, say I need an extra hinge plate somewhere or more so, I use these day in, day out in the industry because look at these slides. They all have a chamfer and they all work with the five millimeter coarse screws. So I can set, and I use this predominantly for drawer slides, okay, especially the under mounts. They work wonderful and I don't, I can get them exactly where I need them. So when I set my screws, it doesn't pull it out of alignment. And that is so important. Chris, come on over here just for a second, I'll show you. Because I have two lines of holes here, and they may want to put another screw in here, I could take this just like this, and I could get it, let's get this right. It's exactly in the center. Hence, self-centering. You have eliminated your eye on this. Everybody in the industry, everybody who woodworks sets cabinet hardware needs a VIX bit, and we have it, and this just gets lost in the Festool catalog. Woo! I think I'm ready. Now I gotta drive two hours. All right, 
Did I cover everything, Chris? I think so. Yep. Everything you put in the description, yep. that's what'll save me. Minnie, how's the writing going? It's amazing. Wow. Hey, that little hiccup in the beginning made this a little bit longer. It was fun. It was fun. I love it. Okay. So <clears throat> let's call out the board. Wow, look at all these returns. Okay. I always have to say this. We erase the board every week. <laughs> Okay, <laughs> it just looks, it's awesome. Thank you, everybody. Okay, so we have Des from Harrogate, England. We have Alan from Vienna, Austria. Ricardo from Lake Como, Italy. Jason and Yana from Granite Falls, Washington. Woo, you guys are awesome. We got Chow Chow. Sea Chow. Sea Chow. <laughs> Chow, this is so cool. From Chicago, Illinois. Richard and George the Sleeping Dog from Newcastle upon Tyne, UK. Oh, he's there. It's Dirk from Dayton. I heard you had a wedge salad with Travis last night, and he's at the Woodcraft in Dayton. Woo! All right. Hey, whole crew. Thanks for watching. You guys are always there with us. We have David and the Timonian crew from Woodcraft. We have Peter from Melbourne, Australia. It's about 1.30 there, I think, in the morning. We have Hyth Woodworks off the cuff. Captain Kirk from Marietta, Georgia. Woo! We have Dave from Portland, Oregon. Mac from Anaheim, California. Sam from Kingston, New York. Christopher from Malta, Hawaii. Peter from the Netherlands. Jacob from Rhode Island. Jeff from Clarksburg, Maryland. We have Jerry G from Sugar Grove, Illinois. Dana from Yalcott, Washington. Warren from Batavia, Ohio. Monty from Canton, Connecticut. Warren from Caldwell, Ohio. Carrie from Dallas. Soren from Denmark. David from Israel. Mac from Los Angeles, California. Tom and Kelly, and you didn't even have to write that many, from Eaton 10, Georgia. Thank you, guys. We love you. You're always there with us. Jim from Happy Valley, Oregon. Joshua from Sun City Center. Joe and Henry from Akron, Ohio. Henry's also a pup. But Joe is my main man, Joe. Joe, it was awesome hanging out with you at Hartville. Make sure you email me so we can get together. We have Pa from she we have Pa, Cheryl, and Sam from Anthem, Arizona. Mark from Crimpen under Leck. Woo! Boom! We have Matt from Tinley Park, Illinois. Because there's an S in the end. We have Merlin from Walla Walla, Washington. Ray from Pensacola, Florida. Rob from S S South Devon, England. We have Michelle from Paris, France. Jason from Fenton, Michigan. We have Oliver from Southern California. Oliver, you rock, dude. We have Joe from Waseca, Illinois. Ed from the Big Island. That would be Hawaii. Andrew from Toledo, Ohio. We have Garrett from the Big Island. No, he's from Oahu. We have Garrett from Lafayette. We have Andrew from Toledo, Ohio. We have Mike from Austin, Texas. We have Garrett from Lebanon, Indiana. We have Mike S. from Woodcraft, Springfield, Virginia. Paul from Lancaster, Pennsylvania. Michael from Edmonton, Alberta. Stevie Z from Switzerland. Rick from Sunny Blackpool, UK. Leo from Holland. Jeff Covey from Michigan. Norman from LA, California. Dawn from Hoosick Falls, New York. That, that just has a cool, that's just a cool name. We have Brian from Buffalo, New York. We have Stefan from Quartzsite, Arizona. Did I get that right, Minnie? No, okay. Oh, hey, Minnie? Yes. I met this gentleman. This is Giev from hey. Shaker Heights, Ohio. You met him? And I pronounced it right, or, is, or I think it's Geeve. <laughs> I always oh, forget. Yeah. <laughs> you are like the coolest dude, man. It was I so know. nice. Thank you for coming up and introducing yourselves to us. I'm we have Kurt from Rochester, Michigan. Gerald from Dorita, LA. Spock, Trish, and that's Willie. Ah, ah, po, ah, ah, ka, ah, ah, Finland. Woo! Joe Knudsen. How you doing, Mr. Knudsen? Woo! Alan from Warren Smoff. From Business Bots, or Business Bolt. Business Bolt, I have no idea what that's about. How you doing, Alan? John from West Philly, Vermont. Edric from Citrus Hills, California. Salim from Federal Way, Washington. Mike P from Oahu, Hawaii. Pocono Joe, I love that, from Lakeville, Pennsylvania. 
Glendorn, Glendorn, North Wales, Polly, Paul, Polly, Paul from Reading, Berkshire, UK. We have Mark from Claxton, Michigan, the Warped Woodsman woo, from Portland, Oregon. It's Gwen and Dave, but that is the real Gwen. Hi, Gwen. Gwen gave me some nice t-shirts. I forgot them at home, but she gave me a Gwen t-shirt. All right, how are you, Gwen? We have Jason from Puyallup, Washington, Doug from Zionsville, Jeff from Bloomington, and there, Arno from Wall Week, Wa Wall Week. We have Marvin from Holland, Michigan. My, that's my main man, Marvin. We have Johnny O from Atco, New Jersey, Bermuda, Steve, Ron from Eatonton, or Eatonville, Bland from Beaverton, Oregon, Ed from Elk Woodworking, Herman from Holland, Matt from Newark, Ohio, Mike C from Winchester, Virginia, Nick from Columbus, Ohio, Jay Swamarayan from India. How you doing, John? Jay Swamarayan from India. We have Dave from Rio Rancho, New Mexico, Herman from Holland, uh, two Hermans from Holland, Minnie? Keith from Montana, John, <laughs> check it out, Herman from Holland, Herman from Holland. John from <laughs> John from Sweet Sweepy Sleepy Hollow Illinois Damon from Las Vegas Chris from Minneapolis Alan from Austin Texas Warren from Batavia Ohio Warren I don't think I've ever said this but you have been there with us the whole time thank you Demi's or oh, Dennis from Las Vegas Kevin and family from the from Ireland Woo Steve from Beers with the Boys Dean from Fagware County, Virginia. Jim B. from Green Bay, California. Tomas from Hungary. That's what I'm getting. Ra, Ra from South Devon, England. Abel from Philadelphia. I'm waking you up, unit. You are nodding off, dude. Je Greg from Moss, Tennessee. Andre. I know who you are, sir. How you doing, doctor? From St. Louis. Bo Box Car Jerry from Philly. Chris from Hampton, New Hampshire. So oh, guess I know who, Chris. Guess who Andre? Schwamb I know. He's doctor. Went to school with who? his children, Doug from Zionsville. No yeah. way. They have been reunited right here. It's a small world. <laughs> OK, everybody. You're awesome. We love you. Thank you so much from our hearts. During this holiday season, I always get a little acclimat because, boy, it's been a heck of a year. We're already planning next year for Festool Live. I think I get January and February already in the books for episodes. We are going to have one heck of a year. You know what we're going to hit next year? Mm. 200. Oh, sweet. Can we have cake? We are going to have cake. I'm going to get you a pencil. <laughs> and we're going to have so much daggone fun. Hey. Everybody have a safe weekend. If you're going out to Christmas parties, be safe, please. And did I tell you we love you? We love you. I think this is a wrap, baby. I'm on the road, Mueller. Mueller.